Aloha and welcome back to The Creative Life from the American Creativity Association on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Phyllis Bleese. Today on the show, we'll be discussing the topic of unity through creativity, not through force. With creator, innovator, artist, and educator, Miss Lori Marshall. You can send questions by email to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Welcome, Lori. Let me start with you and tell us something about this title. What does it mean, unity through creativity, not through force? Unity through creativity is a goal. It is a practice. It is something that works in the world where all of us come together as respected peers and share ideas to make a world that works for all. Unity Through Creativity is a nonprofit that I founded in 2001 and uh, it's been going for 20 years. And with witnessing every day the bombardment of Ukraine, the contrast between the world I know is possible where everyone is respected and everyone's gifts are asked to be shared and celebrated. It's so different than the unwanted physical destruction that is going on in Ukraine and, and in so many places in the world. It is a peace building through art practice and it is inspired by nature. Oh. It sounds like getting to nature is something we're getting very far away from with the idea of pushing the button on nuclear warfare. Yes. I'm wondering, you know, our tagline today is about the healing, the trauma of war in Ukraine. I know you've done it in Sarajevo. You're doing it with your project in Afghanistan and Cyprus and Uganda today, is including Ukraine. Tell us what your project is to heal the trauma of war it, and how is it creative? I'd like to share the first slide, um, if you'd be so kind to do that. The, the Singing Tree Project is a collaborative mural project that envisions success and it, it envisions the healing of heartbreak. And this uh, painting that you're seeing is the same painting that is behind my back. And it was created right as COVID hit and it's called The Singing Tree of Embracing Our Unknown. And we were uh, a group of uh, women who were being trained to be facilitators of the Singing Tree Project were all facing the trauma of COVID. We were in India, England, of Somalian heritage in the United States. And we each came up with looking at what is breaking our heart and, what's, and then twisting that around into what we can do about our heartbreak. And one of the things we can always do about our heartbreak is to express it and to turn trauma into beauty and purpose into pain. So we turn the pain of COVID into the image that you see behind me. If you go to the next slide, if uh, this, could you blow this up without me on it? Because it has very important words these words are by Sherry Mitchell, who is uh, from the Penobscot tribe, and she is a lawyer and a visionary educator. And this is the, the basis of how we heal trauma. And as she wrote, if we hope to create a new reality, we have to shift our emotional energy away from the reality being presented and focus on the reality that we wish to create. And this is so important because we can't heal unless we envision the possibility of healing. And we at Unity Through Creativity use art and storytelling and dance and music to create the village that allows people to express their trauma. And if you go to the next uh, image, and again, pop it up. So, 
what you're looking at here is the Ukrainian singing tree of strength and freedom. This is the study for it. And in the center is a tree with a nightingale, which is Ukraine's national bird. It's a viburnum tree. And we put the tree rooted into the heart of the world because I think we're experiencing this heartbreak of how crazy war is. The leaves have come from uh, young people around the country from Ohio and uh, people are sending leaves in from England, from all over the United States, from Uganda. And we are taking this moment to collectively express our, uh, our love for Ukraine. And trauma cannot be healed without love. Mm -hmm. Again, unity through creativity, not through force, means that we lead with love. And that's so hard. It is so hard. So, Lori, let me ask you a question. You said, uh, how large is this project going to be people-wise when it's fully engaged? How many people are, are participating around the world right now in sending in these leaves? And how, how many people could work on this Singing Tree project in Ukraine right now? Can people in the United States and uh, uh, around the world, can they, are they sending in drawings of the leaves or the yes. leaves? And then you're, you're recreating them and you're fitting them into the mural on their behalf? Yes. Yeah, so these just came from England today. Oh. Um, yes. From a... a an elementary school in England that we have a relationship with that just completed the singing tree um, of inclusion and protection. Um, so I don't know how long, how big it's going to be. We're starting off with an eight foot by four foot sheet. Uh, students at University of Texas in El Paso are taking my design and putting it on this board of eight foot by four foot and we'll get in as many leaves as we get in. Uh, everybody's welcome. If we need to make another uh, another mural, that'll be great. And um, I, I'd like to share the origin of the Singing Tree Project because I think you'll understand how organic it is. Okay. In 1999, I made a mural with an uh, elementary school in Leesburg, Virginia, and all the kids in the school made help to paint the mural and a eight-year-old girl named Meredith Miller said I wish the whole world could see our mural and then the whole world would be happy and then she said what if the whole world made a painting together and that vision of a child changed my life and it brought me to the place of wanting to invite the whole world to create together instead of to destroy each other. And, and we have Meredith on the screen. Thank and you, there's Michael. Meredith yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and she's all grown up now. And right after Meredith gave me that remarkable earth and soul shattering vision, somebody gave me the book, The Singing Tree. And Michael, if you could go to the next slide. The Singing Tree is a book by Kate Sarity, which feels even more relevant now with the terrible destruction in Europe. Her daddy was a soldier, a Hungarian soldier, and fought Russian soldiers. And one night, his battalion crawled on his, their bellies all night long to escape the enemy. And everything had been destroyed by war, just like in Alipo and, uh, and in the Ukraine now, and they, um, when the dawn came, one tree had survived. And in that tree were birds who aren't normally together, and they were singing a song that had never been heard before. And we can choose to destroy our planet, which is like the singing tree of the galaxy. And we can choose to destroy each other, or we can choose to create beauty that's never been seen before. And that's how the Singing Tree Project began. And there's 105 murals made by 52 people from 52 countries and over 21,000 people have contributed. And I'd love to share a video of two years of Singing Trees. They're intergenerational projects, but they are often student-led. 
because in order for there to be peace building, we have to train young people and listen to them. It was so engaging and the colors, you know, they feel good. It, it just working with the colors would make your sadness, you know, shift just in your interiority. Um, yes. What are some of the reactions of the people in the room working on it? Do you have a whole range? Do they cry? Do they, I mean, if you had taken this project to that building in Ukraine last week, that was bombed, where they were living down in the basement. I mean, what, what wouldn't this be something that they could have been doing together? It's very humbling because in the, in the face of bombs being dropped, art seems uh, like a humble response. And yet when you make a mark and make, you're making a decision, and when you make a decision and take action, it releases all kinds of positive hormones in our brain and in our body. And the fact that in war, you feel so helpless, it then uh, making, doing art together, doing music together, telling the story, it empowers people to, um, to say what their inner experience is and be witnessed and the, we can be witnesses to what's going on. And yes, I've had people cry. Yes, I mostly have people have joy at what's possible. And I, I remember a, a kid in high school who was speaking, he was a, 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 a redneck kid, was uh, looked at a leaf that a kid who, who was a, uh, 
called a hippie kid made. And the redneck kid said, I didn't know that he had that in him. And to see the inner beauty that we all come with is so very important. Um, yeah. It, Great it, question. Wait, now, you've already had the Sarajevo Singing Tree Project, and Sarajevo went through horrendous internal strife. Yes. And, and so you have a little perspective on this. What are the comments you're getting now? What kind of change does this form of creativity make in the lives of the people engaging in it? That's a, a beautiful question. When I made the Sarajevo Singing Tree with young people whose parents had been killing each other in the 90s. We, we did this in 2014 to celebrate 100 years anniversary of World War I, and there was a peace conference there. The students didn't want to put any continents on the earth. So the structure of the singing tree is a tree on the earth in space, and everyone envisions solutions to community challenges, as I said before. When the kids from Sarajevo made the earth, they put musical notes around it. They put no continents, no borders. They, they saw themselves as being tied through their creativity, not through I'm a Bosnian, I'm a Serbian, I'm a Croatian. So it allows people long term to understand that everyone is a creative being and to have more respect for their own creativity as well as for that of others. And I think you have some more examples to show us um, that you've worked with. I really want to give the viewers an opportunity to see all the different methodologies and ways and participations that they can uh, be part of. And I think you have a process for training people in this project and yes. in this process, right? So maybe right. sharing a little bit about that and where they can find uh, the tools for doing that as you take us a little bit more around the world. Sure, would you be so kind to uh, show the next slide, please? So this is uh, the image of the singing tree being the, uh, the galaxy of the, the earth being the singing tree of the galaxy and this image was envisioned by a seven-year-old, the blood dragon singing tree to prevent extinction. And the young people that are coming in now have incredible insight about the precariousness of our time. And we are training people to, um, to become singing tree facilitators so that this image all around the world can be seen as a symbol of, we can work together, we can regenerate, we can create peace, and there is abundance. And we listen to the children and we value the well being of children. So that's why I love having intergenerational design teams. And the you can go to unitythroughcreativity.org and you will see the certification information there. Mm -hmm. And could you go to the next slide, please? And while he's doing that, we have a question from the audience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Howard Wing has asked if, he says, if you speak, you speak of getting perspective when a creative idea pops up. Do creative ideas come in the form of images? Can you literally see your creative idea? Absolutely. And I welcome everybody to draw their ideas. So these many of these singing trees are designed with input from 35 or 50 people who draw their image of how they see the solution to the issue of water or the heartbreak of autism or the uh, heartbreak of addiction. And, and I ask everyone to draw. And guess what? Everyone has unique, beautiful images to draw. I've had one person in all the 25,000 people I've worked with not make a successful, unique image. And that was a person at NASA who walked out of the training. Everyone else has a unique image. We've been drawing for 60,000 years or more. And we've been told that only a few people can draw. But if you can draw the alphabet and make a straight line or a curved line, there's nothing you can't draw. So yes, seeing the image is 
available to everyone without vision the people perish right. it's well, there in us and if you're doing a joint project you could ask you or someone else say this is what's in my mind could you just sketch that out for me and and, yes. and you, and you co-create your your future your, your image and you write we welcome writing as well and we are very inspired by harriet tubman who saw every one of the people that she took on the underground railroad as already free and i see a world where everyone is contributing their gifts and is acknowledged and lives in peace and that's that's what the whole world's invited to create would would you be so kind to share the next slide so this is the water willow singing tree that was made by teenagers and i love how the young people understand the connection between the human life and the life of nature with the umbilical cord running around the master tree and um, the leaves are water drops and they're also teardrops and you know we're broadcasting out of the hawaiian islands and any deeply uh, embedded water imagery certainly is something that that hawaiians can relate to i mean it's a fact of life and it, it's, it's lovely to see this. It would be nice to start a singing tree project around the indigenous uh, uh, connections and cultures and interweavings of all of the cultures. Yes. Uh, not just in, not the Hawaiians and the native Hawaiians, and, uh, but every one of the cultures that came to the islands. And they're now one very large group of multicultural um, yes. Uh, people. So maybe, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about the indigenous people's work that you've done. Yes, I um, had the privilege of working with Res Refuge, which is in Fort Defiance, Arizona, with the Diné youth. And they work three years on a singing tree to oh. honor native tradition. And they made the earth a Navajo basket. And it's on the Unity Through Creativity website. There's a gallery there and you can just type in um, uh, Diné singing tree and it'll pop up and if you go to the next site uh, the next slide there this is a singing tree that we made to honor all federally registered native tribes in the United States and it was designed by Marian Hansen who is a Kiowa uh, artist and uh, every leaf has written on it the name of one of the federally registered tribes and our, our singing tree honors the model of trees. And when I said it's rooted in nature, it's rooted in the mutualism and cooperation of nature. The stories of survival of the fittest, which is what is going on in Ukraine, is a, a small part of the story of life on the planet. The competition lives within incredible collaboration. And the trees give us tr uh, seeds and nuts and oxygen and clean the water and sink the CO2. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see before how- Before we leave, yes. I, before we leave, I did want to point out, I know that there's a Hawaiian leaf in there. I don't know which one, it was the monkey pod tree or the hibiscus tree or what, which, whichever one that they use, um, it's in there, although they, I guess the name Hawaii will be on one of those leaves because right. the leaves are actually similar. So. Yes, right. They're all the willow leaves. Yeah. Yes. And um, this is the logo for the singing tree that's going on in Uganda <clears throat> that we've just begun. And the artist, um, Emma Kabamu, made use the viburnum leaf of the Ukraine uh, in the uh, the Changwali singing tree logo. So you can see the, the tree itself is the leaf of Ukraine because they, the peer people in Uganda that we're serving have, are in a refugee settlement camp. And so we're honoring that all of the refugees on their planet are united. Aww. And if you go to the next um, slide, I know we have just a few minutes left. These are some of the books that I've made to support nurturing creativity in young people. The Flood of Kindness was, uh, is a story by 
my godson who was eight years old and wrote a story about Hurricane Katrina. It's for children about being creative in the face of uh, natural disasters. Beating the Oz Now is for educators and parents and the singing trees is the story of the first of uh, five singing trees that were made. Mm -hmm. So I thank you so much for being here and having me share this vision that unity through creativity is possible and practical and beautiful. Well, thank you. We didn't get to the yin book that your sister wrote. And uh, I can tell, let the audience know, we'll stay tuned and we'll have you back. Uh, maybe we could start a singing tree project through Think Tech Hawaii and the American Creativity Association. Uh, it's just been such a delight. Uh, and let me sign off now with uh, leaving it right there and letting our audience know that you have been watching The Creative Life on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we have been discussing the topic of unity through creativity, not through force, with creator, innovator, artist, and educator, Miss Lori Marshall, who leaves us with a creative singing tree artwork approach to healing division in even the most worn, torn areas of our globe. Mahalo for participating, Lori, and mahalo to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Phyllis Bleece. We will be back in two weeks for another edition of The Creative Life. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.